Great. And uh, maybe also just make a note to welcome our colleague, Tom, who's back from the wilderness in Australia uh, today, back in Nairobi. Um, and he's joining us just to listen in on the call. As I think you all know, Tom and I work together on the program design and support processes with the World Bank. How's it, Tom? Thanks, Neil. It's a real pleasure to be back here and, and lovely to hear everyone's voices again. Really looking forward to the, the presentation from Andrew today. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Andrew, over to you. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, based on what Neil said, I just want to uh, change my first slide. Um, to something that um, uh, fills in from where we were last time. Um, you might remember in the last session, we were talking about program design in general, and I was trying to punt for the whole idea that when you are designing your curriculum, you've got to keep what I call constructive alignment in mind. Okay, Constructive alignment was a simple idea but quite difficult to implement. And that is your objectives of your course, your tasks and your activities and your assessment should be aligned. All right, so the idea then is that um, when you do it at the phase you're at now, you need to be saying, do all my bits and pieces line up? <laughs> so if you look at uh, the example that uh, we, was shared with us uh, a few days ago, we can see that we're getting very close to that. So on the screen at the moment, you can see that we're now thinking about, all right, within the education course, what are the specific objectives that we are trying to achieve? And you can see now you're listing them. And the nice thing is they are quite specific. Uh, then we've got a section on content. Obviously, uh, it helps in terms of knowing what you're going to cover in that section. But then there's the teaching and learning activities. And when I was reading through them, I thought, oh, cool, they're beginning to take shape. They're, I can kind of see myself if I was an educator doing these, uh, uh, these activities. And then we can see that now they are thinking about pulling the assessment tasks in as well. So that's looking really, really nice. Okay. Um, I, I would like more detail, but I think um, that's something you'll, um, you'll hear from me. The more information we have, the easier it is then for us to actually develop the course and build the course and for people to implement the course. Um, sometimes the um, objectives and the assessment tasks are very vague and very extremely high level. And then you think, well, what does that mean? But uh, I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing when I went through the, the document and had a look at uh, how it's beginning to take shape. That looks good. So what I'm interested in today then is how do we measure this thing now, all right? As Neil was saying, uh, uh, for us educators and for the learners specifically, how much time do, do we need to invest in while we're studying this section? And then you can see from Neil and Tom's perspective, they want to know how big is this thing in terms of building it and creating all the materials, et cetera. So that uh, is, is also uh, why we need to measure this thing. So um, also in the last session, we talked about notional hours. It came out and people said, what's this notional hours? You're used to contact hours and so on, but now in uh, what is this notional hours? So that's where I'm going to pick up today. I'm going to give you a little presentation, talk about the concept, uh, and uh, hopefully then um, once you guys got it under your belt, we're going to try and get you to, to try and work out some of these notional hours for the activities that you've already identified in these grids. All right, so let me go back to my beginning. And let's start off with what are these things? What, what, how would we define notional hours? And um, I just lifted this straight off the internet. Uh, national, uh, notional learning hours are the estimated learning time taken by the average student to achieve the specified learning outcome. All right. So um, often when we're designing courses, we put the notional hours up front so the students can see. Uh, but we're, we're aware that some people are going to fly through it much quicker and others might need more help and remedial help, etc., to be able to complete the, the uh, specified outcome. But generally, as a guide, how much time should a student actually spend uh, working through the materials and the activities, uh, etc.? 
um, and it says there, uh, they are therefore not a precise measure, but provide students with an indication of the amount of study and the degree of commitment expected. All right, so in some of the courses I've built, uh, the authors like to say it is recommended or we advise. So rather than stipulate that it's, that it's a mandated uh, amount of time, it really is just an estimation. All right, so notional hours include everything. All right, so the idea then is we're so used to counting the time where we had them in the lecture hall or the training venue, um, and now we're saying, no, no, notional hours is everything, absolutely everything required by the student in order to achieve the outcome. So that includes the study time. It includes any lectures or online sessions like this. It includes any of the assignments or any of the readings. It includes uh, preparing for the examination and the examination. All right, so uh, if there is one. So the, the idea then is this is full time. Every, every moment that is required in order to uh, achieve that outcome. Now, um, because it's, it's, it, it's all encompassing, it's often used to measure how big the course actually is. And you can see there that the credit rating system rates 10 notional hours as equivalent to one credit. Now, this is true for certain countries. Uh, New Zealand, the UK, South Africa very definitely use this um, uh, one credit equals 10 notional hours. Uh, the, the, and this has proved very useful. So when we are trying to work out then, so how much time should we be giving in total to the students to complete this piece of work? Then we also know how many credits are we supposed to hand over uh, if they have successfully completed uh, the work. So um, uh, for example, a higher certificate so I'm not quite sure what your teacher program is at what level it's supposed to be at, but assuming you say it's a higher certificate, then um, it might have 120 credits consisting of 10 times 12 credit modules. So you might say that all that work is cut up into these um, 10 modules and um, a module consisting of 12 credits equates to 120 notional hours. All right, so the, the nice thing about the British, the New Zealand, the South African uh, uh, model is that uh, it's very easy to work out how much time should you be allocating in your course in order to achieve a specific credit. All right, however, that's not the only model and I'm not clear what you guys um, uh, are mandated to use. For example, the European credit transfer system has a has very different uh, setup. They say one credit is equal to 25 to 30 hours of study. So that's quite different. So you obviously need to see, is there something that's been mandated for you in terms of your context and your country, your national context? Uh, because then you obviously have to work according to that. If there isn't, then I would say go for something that's very easy to, to work out, like the uh, 10 notional hours equals one credit, something like that. Um, all right, I'll just show you an example of this in action. I love the New Zealand materials because they are so clear and so precise, and there's no muck, mucking around. It's very, very straightforward. So I've pulled uh, out the qualification framework, um, and uh, you can see there right at the beginning, they talk about the credit value in this document. Obviously, all higher edge or all training and education institutions within New Zealand need to align all of their courses and programs according to this particular framework. And uh, so therefore it provides them with the structure in order to do that. It says, <clears throat> all qualifications on the NZQF have a credit value. The credit value relates to the amount of learning in the qualification. In determining the amount of learning in a qualification, a qualification developer estimates how long it would typically take a person to achieve the stated outcomes in the context specified. And then right at the end, it says one credit is equivalent to 10 
notional learning hours. All right. So a notional learning hours, according to the New Zealand qualifications framework, is direct contact time with the teachers and the trainers. They call that directed learning. Time spent in studying, doing assignments and undertaking practical tasks, any self-directed learning. And then the time spent in the assessment. And they say, typically, a learner can get through 120 credits of learning in a year. That would be 1,200 hours of, of learning. Okay, so that would be full-time um, uh, uh, in, in a year. Uh, for example, we'll give you a, a bachelor's degree. Uh, um, if you're doing a bachelor's degree, they say it requires a minimum of 360 credits. All right. So the idea then is it wouldn't all be done in one year. They would probably split it over three or maybe longer. Um, and um, that way they can work out um, how much study is required. Right. Um, the, then they introduced this idea of levels. So all, all courses aren't created equal. So uh, these notional hours, while they might exist across all the different courses that are being offered, that, that the rate at which the course is pitched it needs to be pitched at different levels for different things. So for example, the bachelor's uh, degree requires um, the work to be pitched at what they call a level five or a level seven difficulty. Um, and it gives you a little bit more information about what, about what they think they should be able to do. They say, uh, um, yeah, we just, they say that most credits, uh, a bachelor's degree requires a minimum of 360, but it could be as high as uh, 580. Here's those different levels according to the New Zealand framework. So certificates are at these levels one, two, three, and four. Diplomas, levels five and six. Um, a bachelor's degree or a graduate diploma or a graduate certificate would be more or less at level seven. Postgraduate diplomas and certificates and bachelor honors degrees at eight, a master's degree at nine, and a doctorate at 10. All right, so um, that's what's quite nice about um, the, these frameworks, uh, these national frameworks, is it makes everyone work more or less to the same level, and therefore it makes transfers from one institution to another much easier, because we know that they're all working at, at the same level across uh, the, the, the course. Um, just to give you a quick look at a, another example, this is also the uh, one credit equals 10 notional hours. Uh, this is UNISA, the University of South Africa. It's a big, uh, enormous um, um, distance learning uh, institution. And again, you can see they're saying the same types of thing. A higher certificate has 120 credits consisting of 10 times 12 credit module, and that should equate to 120 notional hours. It is therefore requires at least eight hours of study per week across 15 weeks, which is very handy when you're trying to plan your courses. If you know, oh, I've got to fit it into a semester. My semester is X amount of time. I know if they are full-time students, they can uh, obviously put in eight hours of, of study a day, and therefore you can get to see the, the level. All right. Again, within South Africa, they also have um, various different types of qualifications at different levels. So you can see the highest certificate is there at level five, 120 credits, advanced certificate, diploma, et cetera, et cetera. There's the vocational. There's your professional, your doctorate, your master's, postgraduate diplomas. You see the levels are slightly different from the New Zealand model. And then the general uh, idea is they also need to be mapped to a specific level of difficulty, all right, of sophistication. All right, which brings us to your, your one, all right? And um, here I'm beginning to now try and understand uh, how these credits are working in the top right-hand corner here. So my understanding at the moment, I'm not quite sure where it fits in in terms of what qualification this is. Maybe you can tell me in a minute. 
Um, but uh, from the model, I could work out that there are two semesters. The one semester has 64 credits and the other one has 32, maybe a bit more, because you guys are still planning it, uh, which means it's sitting at about 96 credits. Is this meant, are you using the same model or do you want to, are we going to rethink it? Or um, that's what we can talk about in a moment. Um, uh, and at which level is this going to fit? All right. So now you're getting an idea of how it can be used as a measuring tool, because in some contexts, it's um, quite well defined about what this thing is, what a notional hour is, and what it translates to in terms of study time, as well as in terms of credits, etc. When we did that little example um, a few a few weeks ago, before the before the December break. Um, uh, I was trying to myself uh, understand how I would allocate notional hours to what they were doing. So, for example, I, in, in that instance, I looked at the, the bigger picture. I was looking at social science. Someone had mentioned that 32 hours was, would be appropriate amount of study time. I just picked out two outcomes. I was looking at explain how the internal land forming processes take place and impact on the on earth movements. And then the second outcome was describe causes of earthquakes and how to measure an earthquake. And then I was looking at the content and trying to tease it out and work out, right, what are we going to cover? And those were mandated. It looked like it was the curriculum. And then I, I said, okay, so what activities are possible? So then I was trying to say, if I was teaching this piece of content in order to achieve that outcome, I would get the kids to do, or the teachers, to train the teachers to do this activity. All right, so uh, that's where the activities come from. And then I was thinking, well, if I'm going to use my constructive alignment, I've also got to think, how am I going to evaluate whether they have achieved uh, the outcome? So there was my assessment strategy in that next column. All right. Now, if we look at the credit column, you can see then that I thought, well, that first uh, objective, if I've got to achieve the content, which is quite different. So earth movement, drift, continental drift theory and plate tectonics is quite different from folding and faulting. So therefore, I'd need to separate them out if I'm going to teach it that way and therefore have two different activities. However, I thought I could cover both of them in probably four hours. And then... I was looking at the objective on earthquakes and I was thinking, all right, I've also got to teach volcanoes though, according to that list. So even though there was no objective or outcome for it, it couldn't just leave it out. It's, it's part of the curriculum. So then I put a second section in there, came up with some activities whereby they're using technology to, to uh, learn about earthquakes and volcanoes and then an assessment strategy. And then I put in, I think I can teach that in 2.5 hours. I'm now in retrospect thinking, mm, might be a bit tight, maybe three, three and a half, maybe. Um, and that's what's the power of these, of these um, notional hours is now you can map very specifically how many hours are we going to do for this? How many hours for that? And you know, you've already, if you're using a credit system, you you know, you've got a, contain it within a specific size and therefore you can see to what extent is your curriculum overstuffed have you got too much stuff in your curriculum and therefore you're skimming across the top and not really doing anything um, substantially or have you got enough time so that people can engage in a meaningful and significant way in terms of uh, learning the concepts and applying the concepts and uh, simulating the information, et cetera, et cetera. So again, there's, there's the power of these notional hours. All right. So then I thought, okay, let's, let's see what, um, what some general, some general advice, if you're going to go this particular route, you can see the way I was doing it, uh, I was relying on my own experience because I have taught some of these sections before. So I've got a feel for how long it takes a learner or a teacher to acquire those skills. Um, and um, I'm afraid it does come a point when you do need to require 
it, you you do need people to to say, all right, we've got the time for this, but can it fit? And I'm afraid that's where um, it's no longer precise. There is a little bit of a subjective feel as to how much time you can allocate to a particular activity in order to achieve an outcome. However, Simon Paul Atkinson says, um, if you are trying to work out your notional hours, then you need to think of these things. Okay, and I, I agree with these, but they are quite high level. So number one is, check mandated national levels and benchmarks, okay? And I think we have to do that. What has already been mandated by government and um, the education ministry, et cetera, uh, in terms of how do you measure programs and courses, et cetera. Um, uh, remind yourself of required student prior knowledge. So yes, keep in mind that you are working at a specific level. So therefore you, you can make assumptions that certain skills are in place. All right. So, um, in fact, you might need to even say um, the people who are going to do this um, program need to have th this specific prior knowledge in place because we can't redo do that. It's a, there's an assumption that you understand uh, some of those things. So, what what realistically can you say is prior knowledge from the student's perspective, or in our case, a teacher's perspective, a tr teacher being trained. Focus on learning outcomes and how much time will be required to achieve them. So again, it is your outcomes, which is holding the whole thing together. You've got to make sure that those are very clear and exactly what you want, all right? Because they are also going to structure now um, how much time is allocated to the different uh, learning components. How many credits is your course and what does that equate to in terms of notional hours we've been talking about? He also says, determine the ratio of contact self-study, online, and any other ways that you might have um, cut up your teacher training program, all right? So how, what, what are the, the, what's the ratio or the mix of all these different modes of learning? Okay, so contact we know, we've done it for years and years and years. That's time, that's directed learning as we saw earlier, all right? Um, uh, but what about self-study or self-directed learning? Okay, so how much time is allocated to that? And then um, because we've all gone um, uh, either for blended or pure online courses in the last few months because of COVID is forcing us to do emergency remote teaching, et cetera, suddenly now we have this new thing, which is like this blend. So how do you measure that time as well? So um, that you've got to keep in mind. So what is this ratio of the things? Then he says, how much time should be allocated for assessment? All right, so you might, it's all according to what your assessment strategy is, of course. Um, is it studying for an, and then the exam? Or is it actually work that they are doing during the, the learning process, which they are then putting into a portfolio of evidence, or perhaps it's an assignment, which will ultimately be marked uh, and then used as a summative assessment. So um, the idea then is um, how much, time are you going to take away from all the other activities in order to do the assessment? And is that appropriate? And then seven, what is the duration of the course in weeks? Okay, and we could see then uh, in that UNISA example, they were saying that uh, it has to fit into a 15 week semester, for example. So the same here with you guys. What is the duration of your course? How many notional hours have you allocated? And if we divided the hours by weeks um, or even by days, is that a manageable amount for the students to be able to achieve? All right. So you might say students need to do eight hours of study a day. All right. Or the, the training teachers need to do X amount of hours. Is that appropriate based on all the other responsibilities that will be imposed on them? And maybe it's not just your course. Maybe there are other courses that they are doing in parallel um, and uh, then you've got to keep that in mind as well. Um, one of the big problems we find is that people don't get the notional hours right, and then the students are totally overburdened. There's just too much stuff for them to get through. Someone hasn't really thought it through properly, and uh, many authors, many course developers, um, especially academics, uh, feel that the more they can stuff into their course, the better their course must be. And 
obviously that's not true. Um, you've got to get a nice balance between what is achievable. Uh, do they feel confident in tackling all these issues? Are they totally overwhelmed that they're not really thinking it through? They're just ticking boxes to, to demonstrate they are progressing. And that's not ideal either. We want real learning to be taking place and therefore there needs to be a balanced workload. And that's what the, the notional hours help you achieve. All right, and I've got a little, if you want to, um, I've just summarized his article, but if you want to read it properly, there's a little hyperlink. All right, so we're getting to that point now where, all right, so at the very high level, when we're talking about notional hours, we've, we've kind of put that to bed. You can see how it works uh, and so on. But what happens when you get down to the pointy end, where you actually need to estimate the amount of time required to do even small activities, little tasks, all right? And uh, earlier I was trying to suggest that it's a little bit subjective, um, but if you do a little search, you can find people who, who give you some suggestions. This one comes from um, a 2014 document that appeared in the British Journal of Education. And I thought it was quite interesting. I think this person uh, gives them more time. I'm, I'm terrible. I, I give them, I, always, I think I always err on being too little time. We're here, I think they, they've got something quite nice. So they say, for example, if you have given the students reading and comprehending a study guide, I'll say 200 pages, and they need to also make notes, all right, then how many hours should you give them for that? All right, and they say 27, 27 hours to be able to read a 200 page document and then summarize it. Reading and comprehending a tutorial letter of, uh, of 50 pages, okay, and then obviously it's a fraction. Completing activities in guide and the reading feedback, completing self-assessment in the guide and reading the feedback, attending tutorials, group visits, satellite broadcasts, video conferences at a learning center. And uh, they've used the benchmark from Nadiosa and they would say, based on that criteria, 12 hours. And then they've got some assignments to do. They have got four, five hours to produce 200 words, half uh, on reading. Uh, so reading, drafting and revision, and then writing the final copy, they would say 20 hours. Reading and comprehending other letters, eight. Listening to a tape, one. Viewing a video, one. Participating in three online discussion forums. Um, and it explains how much they have to put in during that discussion, 12. A peer collaborative learning experience, five hours. Study career counseling, one hour, et cetera, et cetera. The exam, two hours. Only five, uh, five hours for revision though. So in, in a sense, there's seven hours spent on a final summative examination. All right, so if you're going to really get good, you're going to get down to that sharp end where you look at the individual tasks and then you allocate how many notional hours make sense uh, for your particular students and their context. All right, I forgot why I put this in again. Uh, I, I think I was going to point out that I, I'm too... I'm too, <laughs> in, our, in South Africa, we have a word called schnup, which means tight. Okay, I think I'm a little schnup uh, with my time allocation. I think that might take him a little bit longer, especially this section here. That might be right, but this one, I think I'm being a bit tight. And all right, this is, once you've done that for all of your courses, I, I think I showed you this last time, but this is my planning document. It's my curriculum framework. And I try and work out the notional hours. Let me see if I can get in closer than that. I said I was going to show you. All right, yeah. Okay. Um, so what I do then is I, again, I have my, my titles and my objectives and my outcomes, et cetera, and my proposed content, which is very similar to what you guys have pr prepared. Um, and here's my, my teaching methodology, how I think I'm going to achieve it. So it's very similar to your teaching and learning activities column. 
And then I have this section here, which for me, because I tend to work mostly in blended learning environments where there's a strong te technology component. And so therefore, um, I want to know how much time are we going to spend uh, uh, online and how much time are we going to spend face to face. So I tend to split them into two and therefore I can allocate um, work done on the LMS. I can do work done face to face even self-directed learning. And then that gives me the notional hours for that particular unit of work. And then I can add them all up and say, okay, so for this module, this one comes to 14.25 14 point, 14 point hours of study in there in terms of all the things I want them to achieve. And then for each module, I can just add them all up and I can see, okay, so for my course, uh, this course is worth so many notional hours and therefore it's appropriate to allocate so many credits or not. Okay. So that's um, uh, what I am excited about is the document that was shared with me in the week. It looks like we're getting, we're getting down to the detail, which is nice because then you can start um, measuring much more uh, appropriately. All right, and I just thought that once you've gone to all this effort and all this thought about your notional hours, then it's a good idea to, to at least advertise to your students um, uh, how much time they should allocate to this particular piece of work. So I've just shown you uh, one screen capture. This one's a Moodle. This was um, a course for uh, UNESCO ICT Essentials for Teachers. Uh, this particular one is a responsible use of ICT in the schools. As you can see, there are six little mini sections to it. And they think uh, to work through and do all the activities, it's going to take you three hours. So in the little banner across the top, then they say, uh, advertise quite clearly to the students that on average, you should spend around about three hours working through the readings and the activities uh, in this particular little units of study. All right. So in the end, uh, you can see that this is three hours there, but a lot of thought went into working out exactly how much time should be allocated uh, for this unit of study and how does that fit into your program and, uh, uh, and adds to the, the, final, the final section. And I think that's it. All right. So there's my little propaganda. What do people think? Let's open up for a discussion and um, what is your understanding in terms of notional hours? Shall I ask someone? All right, I will. Let's go with Muhammad Saeed. What, what's your take on notional hours? And is this similar or is this different to for your take on it? Uh, you're, you're muted, can you unmute yourself? There we go. Thank you, Dr. Warren and Andrew Morris. Uh, more. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? So I. All right. Um, I've told you basically our understanding, and you can see that I come from South Africa, and we've got a very specific idea about what notional hours are. Is this similar for Somalia, or do you have a different take on how to work out notional hours? Oh, thank you. Uh, I, would, I would like that question would be answered by Ismail Abdi, who is actually for our uh, uh, ministry, but all, but it's similarly at the University of Somal National University. It's similar for that, actually, the way uh, uh, New Zealand uses for that. But uh, but I have a question with this. And uh, in our courses, it's the way that you're talking about now, it's a full-time courses. But still, you didn't tell us if uh, I want to question you is if it's a part time, how how we can expand it? Is go, is it has to be shorter on that time, or is going to be the same amount of my and, and, uh, of time? What? That's one question. The second question is, as you know, and uh, and, and uh, the courses themselves they are not in the same weight. Some courses are requirements. Some courses are the are, uh, core courses. Is that also an, uh, needs to be in, in, in a different hours for that too? All right, so um, let me just write that out. All right, so first, first of all, part-time. 
so in the end, it's not whether it's part time or full time. It's is it for a specific number of credits? All right. So what are they getting out of it? What is the end goal for them? All right. If it is full time, then obviously you can go for the, the the minimum amount of time possible, knowing that they are spending the, they are that they can appropriately spend eight hours a day. However, if it's part time, then it's more likely you're going to say, all right. So over how long a period can we stretch this um, so that they still complete the number of notional hours required for the allocated credits, but appreciating that they're squeezing it in in the evening, that they're probably doing one to two hours a day instead of um, eight hours a day. Uh, and so therefore you do need to sit back and say, all right, so in terms of course duration, we've got to keep in mind that there are other things happening in these people's lives and therefore they're going to need a longer period of time to achieve the notional hours required for the credits. So it's more, it's more about saying, how flexible can you make it so that they can continue to study over a much longer period of time? Um, um, yeah. Neil? I, maybe I'll just add to that, um, Mohammed. I think this, this really explains why um, your, your question actually explains why the process of calculating notional hours of learning is so important for in-service teacher education. Because I think while what Andrew says is correct about getting the weighting accurate in terms of the expected number of credits. Uh, in, in other words, if it's a part-time course, if we're expecting the teachers to do one full-time equivalent year of study over two years, then we should expect that the notional hours of, of learning for the, for the part-time course would be roughly half what it would be if, if the students were studying full-time. But I think what we have to factor in particularly for teachers is the reality that these are people who are all also working full-time. Um, and so when we do the calculation of notional hours of learning, it helps us to assess if the workload that we're proposing for them on, a, on an ongoing basis is actually practical, realistic for, for, for how their lives work. Um, and, and so I think the strength of the approach that Andrew's described is that it's a kind of, uh, it's almost like zero based budgeting. We start with nothing and then we build up an understanding of the total hours of learning by looking at all the activities we want the, the, the teachers to complete. And then we look at it the other way around when we're finished and say, is that realistic in terms of the number of hours this means they need to do every week? Um, just, just as a, as a, I think as a notional point, the, the kind of expectation usually is that for full-time study, uh, a student would, would probably be doing around about 1,200 uh, or, or 1,300 notional hours of learning in a full-time year. Um, so, so when we're thinking of a part-time teacher and we're thinking, or part-time student, and we're thinking maybe half of that, that starts to give you a sense of how much time we, we, can, we can expect them to be studying each week. Uh, the unfortunate reality, especially for full-time teachers, is it's not that much time every week. So we need to be very careful not to design the program in such a way that we're overloading them. And I think that is a significant concern we need to be aware of. I hope that helps us in answering your question. And um, also remember that um, you, you have some flexibility. They, they normally say that, for example, 120 hours, uh, oh, sorry, 100, 1,200 hours for a year, um, but it could be more, all right? So the idea then is for part-time people, you've got to get really clever because th they are working, they are studying under very difficult circumstances where they're trying to juggle full-time work they're trying to juggle a home life uh, and get their studies in as well. So you're going to kind of um, design your courses so that you are picking out the key and core outcomes rather than trying to build it with lots of superfluous, well, not superfluous, but less important stuff. You've got to, you've got to appreciate that uh, part-time is extremely difficult in terms of learning. So You've got to make it nice and lean, but still, if you are using your credit system, you still got to hit those markers. So even if you do half in a year, what a full-time person does, that's still a lot of hours every day for studying. That's like four hours. So that's, that's they're going to have an enormous dropout rate. So you've got to get really 
flexible in terms of allowing them to develop packages and allowing them to study over a longer time period if possible. Um, yeah, so part-time is a good one. Uh, then you mentioned waiting. Uh, uh, oh, I've forgotten. How did that work? Um, Muhammad, what was the second part of your thing? I wrote down here that certain yeah, parts... The, uh, the weight of the courses, the core course and uh, uh, optional courses, uh, the, uh, how, how you can uh, measure them for the hours. Yeah. All right. So... Um, the, uh, you see, t technically, they would be measured the same way. So you've, um, you, you can say that the core, therefore, are, uh, are weighted heavier. In fact, they have to. Quite often, people say those are compulsory, and then you can have some electives, etc., uh, added in. But um, you, they will still all add towards your your notional hour count, and therefore towards what your your credit system is. Um, especially for part-time people, they're going to be very careful about how they pace through the core materials and then various electives that they might choose. I would say there's, there's no difference. The, the difference for the part-time is, is to make sure that it's manageable and that it's doable. Um, I wouldn't rate them differently. Um, if you look at the diagram of the New Zealand one, for example, they do... Can you still see it on the screen? The, um, you'll see what they do is they they say that for like, oh, let me go back. For a bachelor's degree, there has to be uh, materials at, a, at various levels from five to seven. All right. And then according to how important the degree is, as to what is the ratio of level five, level six, and level seven. Quite often, first years would do level five, second years would do level six, third years, level seven, etc. cetera. But um, when we're designing for like a teacher training course, we could then mix in different levels and the electives could be at a different level, et cetera. But generally, I'm, I, I think it's up to us to decide what is appropriate. Um, they're not doing it degree what what is this teacher training is it going to be a certificate or have you have you worked out that yet what where does it fit in terms of a qualification yeah it's a certificate yeah now it's a, well, certif right now it's a certificate yeah but it's going to be a diploma soon and uh You see, even for in the New Zealand one, for example, they have different levels for the certificates. So they got one, two, three, four. If we're doing a post, a post graduate certificate, then it is fixed at seven. So there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of how sophisticated the information is, but the notional hours will remain the same. It's just how you how, what flexibility you offer the part timers. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. We're, going, right. we're going through a certificate to diploma now, actually. So that's why uh, we have these courses, actually. Thank you. Okay, right. So, yes. I would just add again, um, sorry, as a follow-on to this, uh, Mohammed, and, and for everyone, that I think really the key, the key lesson emerging from this in terms of, of the design of our program is that we, we're going to need to be realistic about what it's possible to fit in in two years of part-time study. Um, given what Andrew just said to you about waiting, uh, I think what that suggests is that we don't want to be scaling back individual courses to reduce their weight relative to the overall program, just to fit in every single course that we identified. What this may mean is that we need to I consider, and I'm not saying this is true, I'm, I'm just putting this as a question for you to consider, whether we, we feel it's practical to actually include all the courses that we, we might want to include, or whether we might think that it's better to do fewer courses and make their relative weighting slightly more um, for the, in terms of the overall program, so that for the individual courses that we have in the final program, we can make sure that we go into the necessary level of depth 
to ensure that by the teachers have by the time the teachers have completed those individual courses, their knowledge base is very strong. Um, my personal instinct always in program and course design is to try to do slightly less and to do it very well, rather than trying to overload the design and have too many courses um, with, with le less relative weighting. Um, so I think Andrew's point that, that it doesn't matter whether it's part-time or full-time, the issue of weighting is really about the course in relation to the program as a whole over two years. Um, and, and that's what I think we're gonna need to get right. I, I hope I'm making sense what I'm saying there. Hi, uh, can I jump in? Yes. Uh, I'm of the inclination that uh, the, the program load is, is a bit bulky as of, as, of, as of it is right now. We have 10 modules per each semester. Uh, we have working teachers who have uh, home lives and you know other activities in their lives. It would not be possible, I think, for them to cover 10 modules each semester. That's why uh, we have uh, we have chipped in. We have uh, we've been thinking about integrating some of the courses like Arabic and Islamic studies and making it into one module. Uh, maybe get uh, rid of physical education because I don't know how would you how you would teach physical education on a blended program on a, on, a, on a distance learning program. It 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 doesn't quite make sense a lot to me. So. We have to rethink about the number of courses or the modules that we have as of now. And I think the ministry would have to come in and also, you know, decide and or help uh, consult with us in, in, in this issue. Thank you. Um, um, all right. I, you, if you I can, can, just, sorry, can I just add to that before you, you add the, uh, Tom and Ishmael. Um, uh, I agree with, with what uh, Abdirisak has just said, um, and that's very much in line with the principle I've articulated, that I think it makes sense to try to do slightly less and to do it very thoroughly and well than trying to do too much. What I would just caution you about is that when you merge two modules into one, you haven't necessarily cut anything. Uh, in program design, that's the same as when people take two outcomes and combine them together to create one outcome, but actually the statement when you read it is still just the two outcomes written as one sentence. So if in combining two modules into one, we're actually covering the same scope of content, but we've just made it one module, it's actually not solving the problem. The, the real problem is that we may have to agree on ways in which we actually scale back the extent of the, the, the knowledge and content coverage in the program as a whole. So, so if we're cutting modules, um, we just be careful to, to not think that merging them is necessarily solving the problem. But sorry, Ishmael, I interrupted you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the, the presentation. Uh, it was uh, very nice. And I think uh, we'll also learn from it. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, uh, Mr. Moore's, I think, presentation was, I think, on the spot. Was, uh, was spot on, uh, and then um, actually for now, uh, picking on the last point raised by Adrizak, is um, in the, this training, we want to put a lot of emphasis on uh, the, the education programs, professional, professionalizing the teacher in terms of you know, teaching them pedagogy skills, practical teaching. That should be our, our, our focus at the moment. And um, I think teachers have been teaching for some time now, for, uh, and uh, I can see, I can, I can say for, I think for them, uh, they have, um, they have, a, they have a specialism in their subjects, uh, especially the primary schools. So there, there may be no need uh, repeating, say, all these subjects, because I can say we are. I can think of, we are in an emergency situation. Uh, the way teachers are teaching at the moment, uh, that the pedagogy pit is, is the one that we need to put a lot of emphasis on. So reducing those um, uh, subjects, those 10 subjects, I think will, uh, will pay some fruits in terms of professionalizing the teacher. So we, we may go back to our, 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 our syllabus, and then to reduce some of the subjects, putting emphasis on 
education programs, uh, psychology, teaching practice, uh, methodologies, uh, micro teaching, all those things, and cutting down on you know on subjects uh, and also teaching the core subjects like math, math, sciences, uh, languages, uh, and so on. So my suggestion is we can reduce yes, we can reduce the workload. I can think of reducing the workload if we all agree. If the university agrees, as if SNU agrees, we reduce the, the the workload that appears on 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 the on the actually the the syllabus uh, coverage uh, in terms of credit hours in terms of uh, uh, semester requirements of a teacher. So in brief, I will say, let's put a lot of emphasis on pedagogy. Let's mm -hmm. put emphasis on you know. Uh, uh, on the core subjects that matter to us a lot, especially sciences, languages, and maths. So that's why I think that's the point. Uh, just wanted to, to stress the point raised by Adrisar that it's going to be bulky and uh, it's going to be overloaded. So with a lot of information. Uh, so I think that's my take. Thank you very much. Um, and I Thank would... Uh, uh, Thomas, do you, do you want to speak first? Yeah, just very quickly, if that's okay, Andrew. First of all, again, to say thank you uh, to you. I think this has been really great so far. And I, what, I, what I'm really appreciating is that it seems to be bringing us all onto the same page because I think what, what Abdi Razak, Ishmael Abdi and, and Neil have all said is pointed towards the same focus of making sure that what is a, a eventually rolled out through this, this course uh, is realistic to be studied by the students and focuses on the on the core things that need to be uh, the core skills that need to be developed in Somalia and, and knowing the, the context a little and I, I agree with what Ishmael was saying about the focus on pedagogical skills and, and the core subject knowledge and really strengthening in those areas given the results of the, the teacher test that um, the teacher proficiency test that happened uh, over the last few years I think that's, that's a really core area that needs to be developed. I think one one other thing that I'll throw into the mix as as we're talking is that I think we need to consider <clears throat> even going back to fundamentals and thinking how many hours per week will a teacher practically be able to study whilst they're already teaching in the classroom or, or providing support for learners to do remote study. Um, I looking at the initial course design, not just this one, but the previous one with, with the multiple subjects in it, um, it did strike me that this was a very large load. And Andrew, you, you had a slide up before that showed the uh, number of hours aligned with certificates and diplomas as well, I think. Um, the, the circa, yeah, about the amount of credits. So diploma, we're, we're talking about 240 credits. Now, am I right in thinking that that's close to, to 2,400 hours because it's 10 hours per credit is what yeah. you outlined it earlier. Yeah. So if a diploma by itself would be 2,400 hours over two years. So 1,200 hours for one year, which is about... 30, 25 to 30 hours of study per week for a teacher. Now, so to achieve a Thanks. diploma over a two-year period, uh, uh, looking at the, the uni SA um, kind of uh, way that they're structured, that, that may be difficult. So we might, I know that the, the ministry and, and the, the university are interested in shifting from a, a certificate to a diploma, my question for the university is, are diplomas in Somalia normally circa 240 credits? And if so, do we think that that is a, a, an amount that it will be possible for teachers to study part-time over the, over the process of two years? Thanks, Andrew. Back to you. Um, all right. Um, yes, and uh, if we take the idea that perhaps at the moment the model is over it, it's a bit bulky and if we take ishmael when he was talking i thought oh what about if we just change the model slightly uh uh everyone is saying that maybe we should be emphasizing the pedagogy component of it 
So why don't we make that the core piece and allocate lots of time to do it nicely? And then uh, when I was looking at, say, the social sciences, for example, I noticed a lot of it was like about the curriculum. So like folding and faulting, et cetera, rather than about how to teach the social sciences. So I was wondering then if maybe instead of going right into that granular level where you're basically teaching them the curriculum so they can go teach it exactly the same to someone else, you're rather saying, no, look at what your curriculum has. And these are methodologies in order to, to use technology or uh, good pedagogy in order to teach whatever it is, whether it's folding, vaulting, earthquakes, volcanoes, or whatever. So, and there's more like a, a social science methodology rather than the social science curriculum. And in that way, it could be much smaller. You could shrink it a lot more, um, but you have made the assumption that these people know their curriculum um, and that what you're really trying to do now is just improve the pedagogy. I don't know if that would work. And then that way you could reduce it quite considerably. Anyway, let's uh, put it out there, chew on that one. All right, let's hear from someone else. Um, Mohammed, Gure, Guru, Gur. We haven't heard from you yet, have we? I like the idea of, uh, of notion hours. You know, um, uh, previously I've been thinking only about creed hours. Now this idea can give us uh, whether students are part-time or full-time, as you said. We, uh, we can consider, or they can also consider uh, the workload or, uh, or that, that they already have. And then uh, the courses they are taking maybe in elsewhere. So th uh, they can think whether they can join this course. And also we can also think consider all this. So uh, it's a very good idea. Great. Thank you. Um, Hassan, would you like to say, tell us what you're thinking? Hassan, can you, uh, you're muted, can you? Tell us what your, your observations and your thoughts are at the moment based on what we've been discussing. Thank you very much, Professor, for your time given us for this opportunity session. So uh, for me, I don't have any idea to add to this session. Only I appreciate what you give us. And I th thank you very much for giving us the time. Cool. And Ahmed Dira. Do you have some observations or comments to make about what we've been discussing? Yes, thank you, uh, Andre, Mori. And I'm really uh, very happy to be here today for this presentation. And I'm really, uh, it's good, really. So just, I was like thinking that this presentation more focus on the national hours uh, and how we are doing calculation for that national hours, hours for learning. So, and it depends on a lot of things. So we consider doing this uh, calculate, calculation, it depends on a lot of things. So I'm really very happy to be here. Then, and my observation is I'm well understand and really, thank you for your visit. It was really uh, helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Are there any other discussion points that anyone would like to raise on any of the issues that we have um, discussed this morning? Ishmael? Uh, Andrew, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, it, I think it would be a good idea if you look at the 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 content i mean the what the university has uh, shared with you in terms of uh, credit hours uh, for, for all the subjects um if you can give us uh, you know uh, a fair judgment on whether uh, what i think here uh, snu 
uh, has prepared need some adjustment or some kind of advice i think that will be very good so that we can we can uh, we know where we are and uh, we can uh, uh, i think adjust the 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 areas that needs uh, that fixing so i think uh, if you look at our the, the the content i think we have shared with you for i think the syllabus we have shared with you look at it and then maybe if you think uh, the, it needs add some adjustment um, I think it will save us time, and uh, we can we can because the model you are using, uh, the type of calculations you are doing was was spot on, and uh, I, I really uh, admired the way you are doing it. And, but uh, for me, I don't work in the university myself; I am in the ministry. Uh, I think it will add value to what we have, so what we, SNU has done already. Give them some kind of uh, uh, ideas where we where it needs fixing. Uh, and then we can start the course. Uh, once the the program starts, we may not have to may not have time to 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 adjust our our work. So that's uh, just a request from on my part. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, just to uh, give you what I think at the moment. I mean, I haven't done a deep dive analysis. I've just had a quick look at the various documents that have been shared with me. But um, I would say then we need to be very clear about how you determine your credits and therefore how many notional hours we can have in total. So um, Tom was talking about maybe going at the diploma level with 240, was it? Um, I'm thinking that maybe you just want to go at the certificate level for 120. Um, and then, but then you've got too much stuff. All right, so then you need to to cut it back. So then you'll identify what is core. And it's, again, you've got to do your analysis of your teachers. What is it actually you're trying to get across to them? Are you trying to get them so that they teach the curriculum in a certain way? Or are you more interested in that they uh, you're improving the quality of the teaching and the learning? So the pedagogy, is that the main thrust? Because I don't think in 120 hours you can do justice to both. I I think you therefore need to um, prioritize something over some. Uh, with me, of course, I would go for the pedagogy and including technology as a component to try and get people excited about using uh, technology and stuff. But that's not really my call. It's what is, what are you trying to achieve with this, this program that you're putting together? And then I would also, yeah, I would trim. You got too much stuff here. Um, the uh, it's, it's all good, but you got to prioritize, and you, because therefore, as it's come, uh, in our discussions this afternoon, when it's become very clear, is that uh, these people will be doing this course part time, and they're juggling many responsibilities. And if you don't want a high attrition rate, you've got to give them uh, uh, um, the feelings of confidence that they can get through the materials that they are adding value, that they're not overwhelmed, that they are not coming dispirited by just falling so horribly behind. So the trick then is to get a nice balance where you are priority, prioritizing specific issues that you want, that you want done. Um, I've, 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 I used to think, yes. Oh, uh, sorry. If I cut you off, can you, you, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll go after you. All right. Now I was just going to say that, um, uh, as time has gone by, I've learned that even one to two hours a night part time is hard. Is uh, when I hear what my various participants are saying, um, and that doesn't give you a lot of time then uh, in a year or or two years in order to really really cover a lot of stuff. So um, yeah, I would go very cautious. Okay. Um, Abdir Rasak? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I was going to say that it seems that we are about to reach a consensus on, on, on how bulky the program is and the need for trimming it down. Uh, but we also have a, a slight issue with the ministry when it comes to uh, preparing programs. They always want any program to, to be the mirror image of what they have. So Ismail, uh, at the curriculum section at the ministry, you know that they, they always look for the program 
to be uh, they want the program to be a, an, an image of, of the, the primary education curriculum that they have. And that's going to be very difficult. We are not going to make a program that is a mirror image of, of that curriculum because simply we cannot teach that in, in, in two years uh, part-time on a distance learning uh, uh, based system. So you will also have to work with the curriculum section at the ministry and you know decide on what needs to be trimmed down and what needs to be the focus for the program because we cannot uh, implement the 10 modules that we have now realistically. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think uh, that's a good point. Uh, for me, I, I, I'm not, uh, I may not make you, I may not be the person making decisions, but uh, uh, what is helpful is, uh, I think uh, that, uh, Technical, I think the SNU and the, the curriculum department may need to put their heads together and uh, come to, I think, uh, some kind of uh, agreement on this point. I think we can, we can come something that we can discuss outside. Uh, I think uh, Abirzak, uh, Muhammad, I think, and Muhammad Said can guide us, um, uh, or, and uh, they can make. I think we can make a, a meeting with the with the. With the director of a, of curriculum the, the development, and I think something something that you can agree on. Uh, but uh, I, personally, I, do, I won't make decisions. But uh, I think it is uh, the directorate that will be able to make those decisions. Uh, but uh, for me, I'm not going to worry about that now. I think we can talk that we can talk about it later on. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So. Um, I, I like the idea that we that it's been very valuable. So wh what have we picked up? We've picked up that uh, we need to align our teacher training course uh, to a specific number of notional allowance uh, and hopefully linked to credits. Then we've mentioned also that the existing documents that have been shared look very heavy. There's lots of content in there and that we might need to think of more creative ways to either cover um, a lot of it or just prioritize and give ourselves plenty, plenty uh, space and time for the teachers to be able to engage meaningfully with the materials and actually change their behavior in terms of real learning. Um, it looks like also that um, both the ministry and the university need to come together on this one because there's historically um, expectations and those might need to be challenged. All right, so yes, please. <laughs> uh, let's not go down this route where we produce this lovely course and we make all these materials and then everyone feels overwhelmed and it doesn't work. All right, so um, yeah, yes, please. All right, so the next thing I thought we would do today is just have a go at trying to allocate time to various activities. So the example I've got on the screen um, I thought was quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you feel this is useful or, or this is you will be doing this or whether you're going to have to engage other people to do it. But if we look at the example on the screen, let me get the real thing up. Hold on, give me a second. I've got it here somewhere. All right, so uh, this is a, a piece. This is on the education component. So it doesn't have the, the subjects. Um, um, but what it, as I said, mentioned earlier, I'm getting very excited because it's beginning to uh, shape up and I can see quite clearly what needs to be covered and how and how it will be assessed, etc. If we look at this section down here, all right, uh, here's our outcome. Uh, introduce in-service teachers to various teaching theories and practice that contributes to effective teaching. And they've identified these five particular theories, um, constructivist learning, self-directed learning, reciprocal learning, project-based learning, and collaborative learning. And, uh, and they're all very progressive and very cool, but I don't think they're done very well in class, no, no matter where you are in the world. Um, so yes, that's um, a, a, an exciting piece of work. Uh, the activities, teachers will create PowerPoint presentations on constructivist learning, 
All right. So um, is, are they just exposition or are they being critical or are they uh, trying to apply them into a learning context? So I think we can go a little bit deeper. Is, what are the teachers doing when they're creating these PowerPoints? Um, is it purely just reciting? Is it comprehension or is it some type of critical analysis or is it some attempt to actually uh, implement within a specific context? Um, and therefore, we now we would say, all right, so this is an activity. So how many notional hours would they require to actually do that? All right. So, um, and this is the, the devil's in the detail. So, for example, you might say, well, first of all, in order to be uh, an expert on constructivist learning, there must be some resource for them to engage with. All right. So maybe it's a YouTube video. Maybe it's a web based resource. Maybe it's a PDF on a stick or something that you've organized for them where they need to go through and think about what are the concepts that need to be applied in this particular approach. Then they need to now take that and do something with it. So if it's just exposition, yeah, they can copy and paste it into a PowerPoint. But it's more likely what we should be saying is choose a section of your syllabus and uh, uh, create a lesson plan which shows the constructivist um, learning approach in practice for that piece and they can then they have to come up with or how they're going to organize a class and which resources they're going to use and blah 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 so they start to think it through that's a lot more work all right so um that's part two um so that's the conceptualizing the planning part and then they have to build the little powerpoint all right which is um uh, again a, a technical skill that they would need to acquire hopefully they know how to do it and then they would put it together. So then you could say, well, so how many notional hours is that? And it's all according to how much they already know, but what their prior learning might be. But um, I'm thinking you're looking at a good four to five hours of work in there. All right. And we've only got 16 for the whole thing. So uh, the next one goes on and says, teachers will view videos on self-directed learning and create strategies for their pupils. Okay, so that's closer to what I was describing earlier. Um, self-directed learning, two, two hours, three hours, if they're looking at a video and then coming up with a plan, Ugh. and so on. The next one, teachers will employ a flipped classroom method to teach reciprocal teaching. All right, now there's two concepts in here. So there's the flipped classroom, and then the reciprocal learning approach. Uh, they're different. And therefore, they're going to need to know what is a flipped classroom and what is this methodology called reciprocal teaching? It's a specific way of reading texts, uh, uh, questioning is four steps or something. All right, so the idea then is um, that's going to take a bit of time. One, they got to get up to speed with the methodology of a flipped classroom and then show how they're going to incorporate reciprocal learning into the actual process of a flipped classroom. So that one, I think, is going to take a while. I think that's a five or six. You see what I'm doing? So what I was thinking then in the next few minutes, give you an opportunity to have a look at a section of here and maybe in groups of two, um, have a go at trying to determine how many notional hours do you think uh, are involved and have we allocated uh, well at the moment these are credits so I think we might have to rethink our credits if we're going to go for this one credit equals 10 hours unless you have a different way that you calculate oh, that, that that 64 is, is is intended to be the notional hours not oh, the credit not yeah. the credit so it's okay so that's easier for us then so then we're saying 16 hours to cover all of these things is uh, using these activities. And keep in mind, we've also got to do the assessment as well. So are we being too ambitious for the 16 hours? So that's what I was thinking. It would be a good little activity. Um, and I thought maybe putting you into little groups, giving you an opportunity to engage with one of these rows and say whether you think the number of hours allocated is correct or not, or too ambitious or too or or not enough 
All right. Uh, let me just see what tools I've got on this version of Skype. Uh, on Zoom. I've got some breakout rooms. Do, do, can I put you in pairs? Give you a row and then you can have a discussion amongst yourselves and then give us a little report back. We've still got 35 minutes. Is that something uh, we can... No problem, yes. Yes, we can do that. Okay, so let me see if I can... Andrew, put... I've given you hosting rights some time ago, so you should be able to do everything. All right, so... Um, there's how many of us are there? One, two, three, four. There's five. I can go into one. Uh, Neil and Thomas, are you not keen or are you? <laughs> I, I wonder actually, Neil, if uh, Neil, we might take the time now to have that quick catch up chat. All um, right, then I'm going to put you two together. You can catch up. All right, so I'm going to assign you manually. Oh, right, before we go. All right, so. Um, Let's say, um, Adirisak, can I give you the, the one I haven't done? This one here, I'm going to give you a partner. Uh, you're going to look at these eight hours. Do you think that is appropriate for um, the types of activities that have to be done in terms of initial hours? And then I'm going to put, um, let's put Ishmael. Let's give you this one here, 16 hours. And then um, Amadira, you're going to go with me. We're going to look at this one here. All right. 12 hours. Is that clear? You're going to have about eight minutes to have a chat and a think. And then we're going to call you back and you're going to give us a review about what you think uh, in terms of the allocation. Uh, let me put you into groups now. Let's see if this works. In room one, I'm going to put, oh no, I need an extra room. Right, so I'm going to put a, a Durasak. And who am I going to give to you? I'm going to give you Hassan. All right, let's go. Uh, room two, I'm putting. Um, Oh, I've forgotten. Who did I say? It was Ishmael. Ishmael, and I'm giving you Muhammad, Saeed. And then room three, I'm going to put Andrew and Muhammad. Is that right? And then I need another room, and I'm going to put Thomas and Neil together. All right, so before I push to go, are you all clear what you have to do? You have to allocate your row. You've got to check it, evaluate it, to, to tell me back in a few moments, in about eight to ten minutes, whether you think the, um, the allocation of notional hours is appropriate or it needs to be changed. All right, here we go. All right, welcome back, everyone. I hope you got somewhere of that very quick activity. Uh, let me just share my screen. All right, um, this is a bit small. There we are, I can see you all now. Can you see the screen? All right, so I think what you would have discovered is that it's not so easy, all right? The, um, I'm showing you the one on the screen, which was, um, which was me and you. Muhammad. Muhammad and I, okay, we had to go at this one. Um, we had to do the one on 12 hours. We had to enable in-service teachers to implement guidelines, the best practices that promote child protection. And you can see we had to cover uh, protection policy, child abuse, identifying at-risk children, resources and help for children. And there were our activities. So we tried to put in hours. I, I'll be honest, I'll let Mohammed tell me what he thought. And you can see our first activity where the teachers will appraise the national and child protection policy. Um, Mohammed thought about two hours to go through it properly and then write a report on it. He thought one hour for that. So there's three hours. Teachers will prepare a presentation on types of child abuse. abuse. So although the policy might mention it, they obviously need more, more information. So they would have to do some research, one hour, 
and then 30 minutes to put the presentation together. I think that's a bit schnook, okay? But that comes out at 1 hour 30. Teachers will write a personal essay on how they would identify at-risk children. Again, uh, do a little bit of research, try and find out how that's done. One hour, and then put together the essay, 60 minutes. So that was two hours. And then teachers will submit a video demonstrating the resources and help available for children in their schools. Now we had a discussion, does this mean that they must make a video or does this mean they must just find the video? So um, at, we decided that maybe it's a YouTube search is what they wanted. Uh, maybe there is one out there, I don't know. Um, so we thought only- I think we, we can change that one, uh, one, one, 20 minutes to one hour, maybe, because you, you will see uh, several of videos, you evaluate the best one. So maybe you need one hour there. All right. So according to our little team, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half hours is what we came up with. All right. Um, and we were originally allocated 12. So I, to be honest, I think Mohammed's been a bit harsh. I think, um, especially when you're new to technology, there's quite a lot of technology in there going online, researching, finding stuff, synthesizing, putting together PowerPoints, writing Word documents. I think 12. Uh, as I told, as I told, it depends on the <laughs> prior knowledge they have, uh, the, the resources they have. Uh, and uh, maybe if they are familiar with the topic, then it will take less time. Okay. But if they have less knowledge, less information, it, it will take a little, little longer. All right. So remember when you're working out notional hours, it's average. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, some people will take longer. Some people will be quicker. You're trying to work out on average where will people fit. All right. Okay, let's get a report. Now, Mohammed, I wasn't being, being critical. It's a, it's a learning process and it takes a bit of time and it takes a bit of experience. What I have yeah, learned is that when you're training online, everything takes so much longer. All right, it really yeah. is gets drawn out and becomes protracted. So give yourself plenty of time. All right, so yeah. Mohammed, well done. Thank you very much. All right, can we have a report back from one of the other rooms? Yes, can we go ahead, if you don't mind? Yes, please. Uh, we did the one for the eight hours, the one that we, we designated eight hours. Yes. Now, thinking about it, we, we thought that we, we would need about two more hours for the first activity. Uh, principles of measurement and evaluation, they would need to read about them, uh, take some time uh, to read, that is about two hours and to construct the measurement tools would need at least three hours, at least. We were thinking about four, we thought maybe four is a lot, but we can have four. We can have four hours to construct the tools. Yes. So that is six hours for that activity, reading the on, on, on the principles and then designing and constructing the tools, uh, six hours for that. And then we decided four hours for the, uh, establishing the reliability coefficient. They will also need to read on it. They will, uh, obviously they will have to know about the types of reliability. So four hours should be uh, sufficient for that. That's what we came up with. All right. So we've got four, five, six, 10. ten. ten. Yes. All right. Um, I think your your allocations are uh, quite realistic based on my experience. I think you're right. Keep in mind, it takes much longer uh, online and there's lots of reading and thinking and there's even a bit of constructing. All right. So I think I think you're on the right track there. Let's go with the group uh, room number two. Uh, was that, I'm trying to remember, was that Ismail? Um. Yes. Uh, sorry. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, we thought of uh, we are doing the the five areas. Uh, uh, 
because unfortunately we, don't, we cannot see the, the activities, but we uh, we do it on the, the content part. Yeah, uh, this one. Think, yeah. Uh, for the first part of the constructivity learning theory, uh, we gave uh, three hours. Uh, I think the activities that we are going to cover is something like a, uh, ex exposition of the, 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 the theory itself, uh, where the lecturer, I think, gives uh, uh, some kind of talk about it, uh, some type of lecture. Yeah. Uh, student, student watching YouTube, maybe uh, looking at the PDFs, and the student uh, carrying out a research work uh, at the end of the lecture, at the end of the lesson. So we, we gave something like three hours. Okay. Uh, for the reciprocal learning, the reciprocal teaching, and this is where I should, uh, for me, this is what matters to me. I want uh, the students, I think, to, to get an uh, understanding of theories of teaching. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the teaching approaches. Uh, for me, my understanding of reciprocal is uh, micro teaching. So I wanted the uh, student teachers to have a lot of uh, uh, activities on teaching themselves. Uh, and uh, I gave a very uh, a good amount of four hours. Maybe students preparing their lessons, getting feedback, teaching themselves, and then uh, discussing the feedback later on. Uh, Project-based, uh, students doing uh, work for themselves, uh, get, taking enough time to do project work, and we gave uh, four hours, um, four hours. Self-directed learning, two hours. Um, uh, uh, the collaborative learning, we gave uh, three hours. So altogether, we have used the 16 hours, uh, and uh, our balance now is zero. We have used all our, our right. hours, 16 hours. Okay. So, yeah. so you are happy with 16? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, cool. All right, so... Um, what did we get? What did we learn from that little activity? Uh, we learned that number one, when you get to this pointy end of determining the um, the notional hours, um, the detail is useful. So the more detail you have about what it is they're supposed to be achieving and how they're supposed to be achieving, then it makes it easier to allocate the notional hours. Keep in mind, we spend a lot of time looking at the activities. Uh, what I did notice in our group um, is that the um, all of those activities are marked. So that made assessment easy for us. We didn't have to allocate extra time for uh, studying for an exam and doing an exam. All right. So the, 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 the report, uh, the presentation, the essay, and the video are all going to be marked. So that's how the points are allocated. Therefore, I didn't have to worry about adding extra time here. But if you have said that your assessment strategy requires them to do an, a test or an exam, remember, you've got to factor that in as well. All right. So that's the second thing we've learned. The third thing is that it is still quite subjective. All right. You can see Muhammad and I, Muhammad, he says, no, nah, they must work hard and fast. All right. And I'm saying, no, give them time, etc. So the fact that two of us uh, have different experiences means that there is a little bit of give and take. All right. I would advise that you always err on the side of being kind. Give them additional time rather than make it too tight. All right. That's um, one thing there. Um, what's nice is we weren't that far off these, these allocations here. So whoever's putting this together, they've got some experience. As long as we interpreted the detail in the activity correctly, then we're not that far different from what was being allocated. All right. So I think that's very encouraging. Any other feedback or <clears throat> comments on the process of allocating notional hours to activities and therefore to courses and programs and ultimately credit? Hassan. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I appreciate your comments and uh, the session for the whole teaching. Uh, what I'm reading, 
let me add only one comment for the national hours to the activities. You know, uh, we have some different uh, styles when we are talking about uh, teaching or teacher training programs. So it depends the teachers that you are given uh, training. So for, the, for their capacity, they are somehow different. Mm. So if the teachers, uh, it needs more capacity, building a lot of, for example, a uh, teacher, he doesn't know how to use even computers or taking words, something like that. So we can say, let us take uh, first uh, evaluate or assess the capacity of teachers that we need to train. So if you give some comment, then you can uh, assess your words, what you need to give, what you need to train themselves. So first, you, we make sure the capacity of teachers in this, before we vote our national hours. Nice. Spot on. Remember old Paul Atkinson, uh, Simon Paul Atkinson. He yeah. Said, yourself of the required student prior knowledge. Because yeah. Yeah. Your notional hours exactly what you said. It's the same, all right. Yeah, if you find that you got teachers who are still new to PowerPoint, saying make a presentation is going to take much longer. Yeah, time. it takes time, it needs a lot of time more than, than this one. Yeah, so keep in mind then that uh, what is the prior knowledge of the group that you're working on, and mm. if they are beginners uh, in terms of some of the tools that you are requiring them to use, then yeah. You more time they're going to take longer so yeah. good. very good point yeah thank you prof all right any other comments uh i have one more comment for but not on notional hours uh hassan needs a an access to the moodle platform if you could provide him with that that would be great sure um yeah yes um hassan i understand can you make sure you've given me your email address? I need your email address to be able to do that. Yeah, let me write. Let me write and send to you. Stick it in the chat even here in the Zoom, and then I'll grab it from here. Thank um, you. For... People, uh, this, the recording of this little session will go into the Moodle, so you'll be able to see it all laid out. I had a little bit of a hiccup today. Normally, I would promote it. But our server is being bombarded by another project. We've got thousands and thousands of people registering and downloading videos. And so therefore, um, it wasn't very reliable today and I didn't want to call it up. But within the next few hours, it'll be back online properly. And all the resources you need, this PowerPoint presentation, for example, the recording of the session will be as per normal in the Moodle. So you'll see how we've laid it all out. So yeah, keep that in it has, mind. It it has already calmed down quite significantly, Andrew. Cool. Then I'll um, finalize it. We've it. added a lot more data to the servers. Sorry, everyone. The reason is because we are leading professional development program for the vaccination rollout program for coronavirus here in South Africa. So uh, that's starting next week. So we need to help the Department of Health with that process. But it, it, we think we've sorted the problem out. Cool. All right. So... Um, that's almost that'll be, that'll be ready in the next few few minutes any other comments because we've now run out of time we've had our, our slot um any other comments before we we close all right then um, um but maybe i can just then add uh if you're closed andrew um uh, Abdirizak, uh, Andrew and I will liaise and will involve Tom as well. Uh, and <clears throat> assuming that you are continuing to find value in these processes, uh, come back to you with a recommendation for the way forward in terms of a possible next session. Um, but it, it does sound like there's also some important internal conversations that need to happen. So we'll try and map that out a little bit and come back to you with a proposal. Thank you, Neil. There's a lot of value in these uh, in these sessions. A lot of value. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. And as I'd indicated previously, and I've just been saying to Tom on WhatsApp, I think what's really nice about this is that we're now getting into the substance of the actual project rather than just the technical design on paper. So it's really nice. Um, and so I'm glad you're finding it useful. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll be, we'll stay in touch.